What is up everyone? In this video we're going to be talking about a pretty intuitive and also really cool concept in data science called the covariance matrix. As you might have guessed from the name, the covariance matrix is just a big matrix that's filled with various covariances between variables in our data. So let's go ahead and look at a simple, uh, simple two by two case of the covariance matrix to get a feel for how it's constructed. Okay, here is our setup as always. We are researchers and we are trying to figure out if there's any link between the happiness someone derives from eating an apple versus the happiness they derive from eating a banana. So we go out into the world and gather three test subjects. You usually want more, but this is a toy example. We have our three test subjects and they are enumerated in this table here. So just for how you read this table, test subject one is this first one. They get one unit of happiness from eating a banana or one unit from an apple and one unit from a banana. Test subject number two gets three whole units from an apple and nothing from a banana. And oddly enough, test subject three gets negative one from eating an apple and negative one from a banana because they really, really don't like fruits, okay? So let's go ahead and represent that by vectors on our apple banana grid right here. So we have the first one as one, one. That person would be one, one. The next one would be three comma zero. So let's go ahead and live on the apple axis right there, three comma zero. And the last one would be at minus one minus one. So that lives right here. So our goal is trying to figure out whether there's some kind of covariance between the apple and banana variable. If it's been a while since your last stats class, um, or if you're a little bit fuzzy on the idea of covariance, just think of the covariance between two variables as the degree to which they go together. So if one of them is really positive when the other is also really positive, and vice versa, it's really negative when the other is really negative, they have a high degree of covariance. If on the other hand, one is really, really positive while the other is really, really negative, and vice versa, then they have a very low negative covariance, right? If that sounds a lot like correlation to you, it's because it basically is. Covariance and correlation are very, very similar, even up to their mathematical formulations. It's just a matter of correlation is bounded between minus one and one, whereas covariance is not necessarily bounded um, between negative one and one. Okay, so you can think of covariance uh, in the same way you think of correlation, just with that slight caveat, okay? So now let me erase the side of the board and let's go ahead and talk about how do we construct a covariance matrix for this setup. Okay, so your first step in constructing a covariance matrix for any kind of setup you might have is identifying what should the dimensions of this covariance matrix be. Okay, so covariance matrices are, matrices are square because they capture the correlation, the covariance between any variable and any other variable. So we need all the variables on the columns and all the variables on the rows as well. In this case, we have two variables only. We have apple and banana. So our covariance matrix will be small. It'll just be two by two. So let me go ahead and draw the home for the matrix to live in. So here's our two by two matrix. In fact, I'll even draw these dotted lines so we can identify the four components. So here is our two by two, uh, two, by two covariance matrix. Now what are we gonna put in here? So we have two variables. I'm gonna say apple, banana for the rows, and then same thing, apple, banana for the columns. And each cell in the covariance matrix will be a different type of covariance. So the first one will be the covariance between the apple variable and itself, because A, A. The next one will be the covariance between the apple and banana variable, so covariance of apple and banana. The next one will be the covariance between the banana variable and the apple variable. Covariance, banana, apple. And the last one, of course, will be the covariance of the banana variable and itself. So that's pretty easy. That's what each of them uh, represents. Now, some of you might notice there's a ton of simplification we can do here. In fact, there's two major observations to be noted. The first observation to be noted is that the covariance between a variable and itself has a slightly easier name known as the variance. So for these covariance AA, we can call it variance of A, and covariance BB, we can just call it variance of B. The second observation is asking the question, what's the difference between the covariance of A and B versus the covariance of B and A? There's no difference at all, um, because covariance doesn't care which order you're doing it in. Uh, basically, it doesn't make sense to ask the question of, what's the relationship between variable A and B versus what's the relationship between variable B and A. It's the same answer in the end. So that means that this cell and this cell have the exact same number in them. And more generally, uh, you're gonna find that any cell and its matching cell 
on the other part of the matrix have the same exact uh, number because they represent the same exact quantity. What that ends up meaning is that the covariance matrix is symmetric, which means that if you were to flip it about this diagonal, then it would look the exact same, which uh, a more mathematical way of saying that is its transpose is equal to the matrix itself. So that's some cool stuff to note about the covariance matrix. Okay, so the last part of this video will be going through a little bit of the nitty gritty work of actually filling in these quantities. We don't, you don't necessarily have to stick around for this part. I just think it's cool to um, go back to basics, calculate some of the covariances and look at a covariance matrix for ourselves, okay? Let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing we'll need to do is calculate the mean of the apple and banana variables, which is not too hard. So mean is given here. The mean of the apple variable, add up all these numbers and divide by how many there are. So three plus one and minus one gives us three, divided by three is one. The mean of the banana variable is zero. You can verify that one for yourself. Um, and now if we want to find the covariance, so let me actually get rid of this matrix because I need some room. Okay, so to actually calculate the covariances, uh, let's say we're trying to calculate the covariance between apple and banana. Here is a cool formula that um, hopefully you can remember from your probability or stats course. If you haven't taken those courses yet, not a big deal. Here's a cool formula you can use to calculate covariance between two variables. Covariance between A and B is going to be given by the expected value of the product of these variables minus the product of the expected values of these variables. Put one too much dash in there expected value of these variables. Okay, so let me say that again, just for emphasis. The covariance between two variables is equal to the expected value or mean of the product of the two variables minus the product of the expected values of the two variables. Now this right hand side is easier to calculate because the expected value of the banana variable is zero. That just zeroes out the entire right hand side. So all we care about is what's the expected value of the product. Um, the product is pretty easy to find. We just go pairwise, find the product of these guys. One times one is equal to one. Three times zero is zero. And negative one times negative one is equal to one. So what's the expected value of this product list we just generated on the fly? Well, one plus zero plus one is two. And there's three numbers in there, so it's two thirds. That's it. We found the covariance between apple and banana is two thirds. And that also means the covariance between banana and apple because it's the same thing, is also two-thirds. We already have two elements of our covariance matrix. Good stuff. Cool, so the only last part to do is find the variance of the apple variable and the variance of the banana variable. Believe it or not, we're gonna be using the exact same formula here. So let me store this two-thirds up here for later. Two-thirds, we're gonna write that down in the end. Uh, let me get rid of this guy. Let me get rid of this guy. So remember that formula I had written the covariance between A and B is equal to the expected value of the product minus the product of the expected values. That also holds for a variable and itself. So if I replace this by A, let's say we're looking for the covariance of A and A, which again is the same thing as the variance of A itself. That's going to be equal to the expected value of the product, so A squared, minus the product of the expected values. Okay, so these two things look similar, but they're not exactly the same. The first one is the expected value of a squared. So if I do a squared, I'm going to get 1 squared is 1, 3 squared is 9, negative 1 squared is uh, 1. The expected value here, 9 plus 1 plus 1, that's 11 divided by 3. So that's 11 thirds minus the expected value of a, which is 1 squared. So that's going to be 1. 11 thirds minus 1 is going to be equal to 8 thirds. So that is the variance of A. Let's go ahead and write that up here, 8 thirds. The last piece of the puzzle is going to be figuring out what is the variance of B. We're going to do it in the exact same way. In fact, let me just make this a B. Let me just make this a B. This is going to be a B. This is going to be a B. The cool thing is expected value of B is 0, so this does not even factor in. So all we really care about here excuse that this is getting kind of messy. All we really care about here is what's the expected value of b squared? b is this, so b, 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, negative 1 squared is 1. In fact, it looks the same as this other product list coincidentally. 
Um, and the expected value of this was 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 2. 2 divided by 3 is 2 thirds. So the variance of B is 2 thirds. Now let me clear everything for real and we'll fill in the covariance matrix. All right, so this is the end of the video and we're going to go ahead and fill out the covariance matrix. Remember, it's 2 by 2. The first element is the variance of A, which we determined was 8 thirds. The next one is the covariance between A and B, which we figured out was 2 thirds. The next one, of course, we don't even need to think about it because it's a symmetric matrix, so this is 2 thirds. And the last one is the variance of banana variable, which was 2 thirds. And that's it. There you got it. A real life covariance matrix for uh, the variables apple and banana. So in general, a covariance matrix is going to be a huge square matrix, which tells you what's the covariance between any one variable that you care about and any other variable that you might care about. Okay, so until next time.